Whenever one says Tuscany, you picture right away in your mind those amazing vineyards running down the hills and mountains of central Italy, designing amazing and unique landscapes. You never think right away about the seaside, but what if you could take this incredible postcard right next to the Mediterranean Sea? Well, you actually can, and it's called Bulgari. Bulgaria is a really famous area in Italy. It's home to the famous Super Tuscan wines. Already in the old days, there were people making wine in Bulgaria, but it was not so famous. What made it famous was the dream of Mario Incisa della Rocchetta at the beginning of the 20s. Then after the Second World War, he started experimenting with French grapes, what he could actually make as a result with top level uh, berries, with top level vines and vineyards. Finally, in 1968, he was able to release a famous wine. Well, this is a really important area. Why is it so important? You need to consider that you have the Tyrrhenian Sea on the west and it's reflecting the sunlight, providing a lot of light to the vineyards. That's why in Tuscany, Bulgaria is considered the vineyard of light. But also you get the saltiness from the sea. On the east, the vineyards are protected by the mountains, so the cold winds of winter can't actually make it to the farm companies. On the north side, you have the Chechena River, while on the south side, you have the uh, Kornia River. This makes it really a unique place where to grow grapes. But today, there is a new generation of winemakers making wine in Bulgari. Today, we're talking about the new wave of winemakers. Poderi di Sapaio was born a bit irreverent in 1999. It embraced the climate and uh, coming from the Bulgaria area and made new, modern, but at the same time traditional wines. Poderi di Sapaio, the name Sapaio, is, was used in the past to call a certain type of traditional grape. So even if Massimo Piccin, the founder, Today he's using international grapes like Cabernet Sauvignon, for example, and Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot. Actually, he has the idea that is the terroir of Bulgari going over the grapes. So tradition is found inside the glass. Massimo Piccin's winery is uh, basically on the fringe of Castagneto Carducci, one of the main areas of Bulgari. On the fringe of Castagneto Cartucci, he decided to go over the borders of the DOC and in 2003 he implanted a vineyard in Bibona. A vineyard which is slightly higher to the vineyards of uh, uh, Castagneto Carducci with a red clay and ferrous soil. From that vineyard he thought from the very beginning that he was going to be able to obtain top level grapes in order to make top level wines. Well, today we know that he was right. Finally, with the 2015 vintage of Sapaio, the crew of Podere di Sapaio, he was able to show the world that the vineyard in Bibona is ready to become a legend. Well, today we're gonna taste 2015 Podere di Sapaio, Sapaio. The 2015 vintage is a blend of about 70% of Cabernet Sauvignon around 20% of Petit Verdot and 10% of Cabernet Franc. We're expecting a really hot vintage from 2015, so we can see right away from the color. It's really deep, intense, it's violet and purple. Whenever we start swirling the glass, the wine starts dancing in the glass like no one is watching. It's dancing and at the same time, it's talking about sun, about a sunny vintage. You can see that the wine is quite heavy, quite consistent, and we're expecting also quite a, a lot of alcohol. But we will see. Let's see how it knows what happens. So, the wine is intense, for sure. And you get nectarine fruit aromas. So, you have blackberries, raspberries, black currants, but also sour cherry. But the wine is way more complex balsamic hints, then you have saltiness coming from the sea as we were expecting, but also tobacco and leather, given by the way that the wine of course is aged. 
Well, the alcohol is not bothering at all and it's working as an elevator, bringing all the aromas to our nose. So it's an amazing experience. Believe me, I'm already drooling and I can't wait to start my tasting and to get the first sip of the wine. The wine enters clean and elegant, but at the same time really wide. The tannins are like velvet, they're perfect. The alcohol is perfectly balanced. This is a wine, as we were expecting, with a lot of muscle. It's a strong wine, but this kind of muscle is like the muscle of an athlete. So it's perfectly balanced in order to do elegant movements and to achieve the top level quality. The saltiness and the acidity make the wine quite sharp and really easy to drink. I would drink this wine even without a pairing, but as we need to talk about a pairing, I would suggest you try it with a pheasant with truffle. I have to be honest, I also had the chance to taste the 2016 vintage of Podere di Sapaio Sapaio. Well, 2016 vintage compared to the one we have right now in our glass is a bit more modern. What I mean by modern, that it's uh, really, really sharp. You have a little bit less structure, less body, but it's really elegant. Don't tell Massimo that I tasted it, but I really loved it. And I hope that I will be able to taste it for you next time.